Hello YouTube, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we're actually sitting down with one of our developers, Moss, who built something really, really cool that allows you to manage your own code snippets. So Moss actually builds a ton of stuff with our tools. You might've seen slides, you might've seen confetti, all of that he has built with the charm stack. Moss also is the author of Gum and VHS and, and is just an overall 10X dev. So. I'll also link his YouTube channel in the description if you'd like to check that out. He has a very, very cool video on Helix, the editor that he's now using for writing his code. But today we're gonna talk about Nap. So like you mentioned, I started using a, a new editor called Helix. Um, so what I kind of wanted was maybe a separate like code snippet manager. That way I can like, create all my snippets and, and do all that stuff. And then basically, have a command line interface for that tool mm -hmm. so that I can kind of import snippets like really quickly, like just press like exclamation mark, type nap main.go and it'll just like have like a, a main.go file for me. So awesome. sort of like a Unix philosophy, like separation of concerns, have your code snippet manager still available as a TUI and the CLI and then have your mm -hmm. editor separately and then, then just like work really well over standard in, standard out, all of that cool fun stuff. Yeah, I was gonna ask because I've seen the TUI for it, but I wasn't sure if they're like, I know that pretty much all of our stuff has both a TUI and a CLI. I was curious if NAP was the same design there. Yeah, I really liked uh, having a TUI to like create all the snippets because like creating snippets is kind of um, a hassle like over the CLI. But then like yeah. reading snippets, you really want that like to be able to like pipe in to a file or whatever yeah, totally. um, over the CLI. So you have both, which is nice but to to use whatever is more efficient. You've built a ton of projects with the charm stack, but I'm curious if this one introduced any new challenges for you. The previous stuff that I built was kind of basic in the sense that, for example, like slides is just like using a lot of charms, glamour and markdown rendering just to make a slides presentation tool. Confetti is a lot of like harmonica stuff and it's just like one, one sort of thing. So a lot of these tools are just do one thing and do them like pretty well, but yeah. nap is sort of like you can do a lot of stuff. So there's like managing snip, like creating, deleting, editing, just the, your CRUD operations. But then there's also like fuzzy search, a lot of like more bubbles, which are like the charm component library. A lot of bubbles are incorporated. I worked a lot more on the UX, allowing people to use this tool because there's a lot more things you can do. So a lot of the key bindings are like really prominent and tells you if you don't have any snippets, uh, it tells you like, hey, make a new snippet. Once you make a new snippet, it tells you, hey, you can copy this, you can do this. And that so I think I really wanted to do like a really cool UX project where someone can use it and just learn it while using it. I just used a lot of things that I learned. Like I was just a better developer when building Nap, so I think it is a better tool than some of the previous stuff I built. I'm curious what you used to store all of the snippets. Like what what's the what's the database that you're using? Yeah, it's just text files. That way you can use Nap normally and then like you don't need to have Nap installed to like view your snippets or like you can use them offline. It's just text files. I really like to keep things simple and stuff stuff like encryption isn't really necessary when everything is local. That way you can just um, view your text snippets. And having this is also really nice because then you get LSP support while you're like editing your snippets uh, because the extension is like the language that you're that you've set as the extension. So when it's a text file, like your, your editor will automatically configure the LSP and then you can write your snippets with LSP support with all your errors. And then That's it just saves really to nap. Nice. And then it just nap has this sort of like snippets.json file um, that like contains all the metadata. So you can set the extension, set the file name, set the folder. Mm -hmm. And then I also want to add miscellaneous metadata, like notes and, and stuff. So you can add that to it. But yeah. the back, and then it references the file name, but the database is, is just text files. Yeah. It's always better to just keep it simple. And it's, it's so easy to kind of over engineer, like overthink things. And sometimes it's just the simplest solution is the best. Yeah. For me, if I like make something too complicated, sometimes I lose motivation. So I just try to do the simplest thing possible as quickly as possible. And then if I want to evolve it and like add a database later, I can do that. I agree. I found with my like, PJ's project, which was the one that I basically like learned Go with and then grew my skills with Go with. Um, with that one, it was like, if I had tried to do all of the complexity that it has now versus like at the time I was just like, oh, okay, I'll just make it a CLI and I'll just like write it to a file or something like that. And I definitely think that it would have been super discouraging for me at that point, right? So that's a great tip. That's why I like building CLI so much because it's mm -hmm. so, you can just start off with like, 
a CLI, right? You don't even have to build a TUI in the first place. Yeah. You just nap, create snippet, and then it just like outputs a file. And you can just get like, you can iterate a lot quicker and yeah. then add a TUI once all the things are in place. Um, whereas building like a web app, you need to start thinking about like the database and, and the, the UI and, and the user interaction and, and the help. Like it's, it's a lot. Um, so that's why I do like building CLIs. Yeah. So Moss, I'm curious, how long did it take you to build it? I actually started building it uh, after the VHS launch. Um, mm -hmm. So I was sort of on vacation um, and I needed a, a project to, to work on. So I decided to, to build an app and, and I was on vacation for like a week. I just kind of time boxed myself to build it in that week. I guess like if I, if I built it some other time, it might've taken longer, but giving myself like a deadline to like launch whatever I have, it was, it was pretty much the week to work on it. And, and I was working on it like during nights and stuff. How did your expectations uh, relate to the actual time that it took? I think it could have taken a lot longer if I if I wanted to make it perfect, but I I did a lot of sacrifices in terms of like features that I wanted and features that I think could have added in because I was always like I can work on this later. Mm -hmm. So, that factored into the development time and it made it a lot shorter because um sometimes I would have an idea and I'm like okay, I can just add this later, let let's put it on hold or put it on the back burner. So, development time was mainly just like what's core to the product and just like the version one, just getting it out the door. It could have taken me a lot longer because I had all these like ideas of like, oh, this should actually be a folder text file and then have the files in inside the folder. Um, but I was just like, I'll, I'll do this later. So I just like, your nap kind of database is just like a bunch of text files. I, I felt like hurt when that happens because I'm like, oh, I want, these are already in folders. These should just be in folders. But I, I just put that off. I'm like, I'll do this later. I'll just have like the folders be metadata in the snippets.json. And it's like kind of a hack, but like the entire world's kind of built on hacks. So I wasn't too concerned about that. I was just like, I want to get this project out the door, see if people even like it, right? I think that's more important than making it perfect. And, that, yeah. and if people do like it and people use it, then I can go back and, and do all the, the really polishing stuff. But yeah, the focus was just on the UX and stuff. So all the the back end stuff was a little more deprioritized to save me time. So how did you get such a smooth UX? Did you do any kind of research on how you can improve UX for different applications or was it just kind of what felt right? Or did you get second, second or third party opinions on what your user flow felt like for them? Yeah. So the primary um, source of the UX inspiration comes from like me using tools. I use a lot of CLI tools and like I try to like anytime some, some new CLI tool comes out, I try it out and, and see like what works and what doesn't. But mm -hmm. I wouldn't say I'm a UX expert or anything, but as a user, we're all kind of experts on like what feels good. So if you're a user yeah. of some like web app or some CLI, you are the user. And so like you're trying to make your experience better. Mm -hmm. And that's why I like building tools for myself. That's yeah. why NAP is like for me, cause I, I didn't have a snippet manager tool. So I'm like, mm -hmm. what, what do I want? And so I probably do less research than I should. It's just really like what I want. And then I assume everyone wants the same things, which is a bad assumption, but it, it's um, what, what I want. So this yeah. is, um, this is how I think about UX. And then I also just like went to this um, other snippet manager. That's like a desktop app. Yeah. I think it's called snippet lab. And I just looked at sort of like what they, what they do and like what features they have. And that's how I like decided on the feature set. One thing about my tools is like a lot of them just are like web apps that like I just port to CLIs, um, mm -hmm. like slides. There's a really cool um, project called slide dev that I'm just like, oh, this is a markdown based project that you can create slides and markdown files. That'd be really mm -hmm. cool uh, in the terminal. And then I just research a bunch of different tools and I try to make the best UX. One thing that charm does really well when I use like tools like glow and stuff is mm -hmm. like the key bindings. So that's like, I think the most important UX challenge with CLI apps, especially if you look at something like Vim, you have to spend like solid hours learning all of the key bindings. Mm -hmm. So that's something I didn't want. And that's fine if, if that's how you want your tool to be set up, because I think it's quite efficient. But uh, I believe that having logical progressions of key bindings is, is useful. Having them, having a help menu, uh, having the next logical step that a user should take should just be like visible to them. So like in empty states and stuff, you should have like key bindings, like what can you do next? That That's something I, I really did focus on with NAP. What's your vision for what NAP is going to look like in the future? 
Yeah, so I really want some sort of backend for it so that you can sync your snippets. Um, I believe that's like pretty nice where you can use your snippets on multiple machines or like you can use other people's snippets even. So if we have like this massive like nap snippets repository and everyone's uh, using using the same snippets and uh, it's sort of like aggregated, I think that mm -hmm. that would be super cool. So if we have like a nap repo on a GitHub or like we just push to the, the nap repo on GitHub. Mm -hmm. I feel like that would be really cool. Another feature is like project local snippets. So I think another yeah. cool feature would be like, I have this project. It should, if it has like a .nap folder inside the project, nap will like automatically be configured to read that folder and like those snippets within it. So that when you navigate to different projects, you're using different like snippets, like, because that's like how snippets work right like your their project specific language specific and that way you can like make hyper specific sort of snippets that don't need to be like reusable as much or like yeah. generic uh, you can just have them focused and then uh lastly i i do really want to refactor like a lot of the the folder structure stuff mm -hmm. uh so instead of just having like a bunch of text files in the nap folder and like having it be like invisible folders and like they're just organized into folders, I would actually want to use like uh, CLI, like Unix folders to categorize them. If there's any questions that you have for Moss, leave them in the comments and we can do a follow-up video where he goes through your questions. I'm good. Check out gum and VHS. <laughs> Check out gum and VHS, yes. And, and bubble tea and everything and make some cool CLI tools and, and share them with us. Yes, let us know what you're building. We'll share it on our socials and... Uh, in the team. We'll be excited to see it as well. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next one. Bye.